Hey guys, this is GKCS. We are talking about the fourth problem from the Code Chef Challenge this time, which is uh, Chef and the Great Voluntary Program. So what we have is a line of people and they are defined as either taking an apple or taking a banana. Alright, so it's just a string of A's and B's that you have given to you. And you have two constraints in this string. Okay, uh, the number of bananas that can be together in a continuous uh, portion is at most y so one continuous portion of b is y and one continuous portion of a is x okay so that's what the string needs to be the the initial string has no such guarantee so you can deorder the string okay so the first operation you can do is reorder the string and the second operation you can do is actually insert something called pairs. Okay, so you can insert, instead of a P, they call it a star. So this is a special fruit, you can say. Whenever you insert this special fruit, uh, the, the contiguous block obviously gets uh, disrupted. So then, then you can have another contiguous block of A's of length X and another contiguous block of B's of length Y. And that will give you a valid string. So that's your end goal here, to create a valid string from the given original string by reordering and inserting pairs okay uh, your aim is not just getting a valid string it's also to insert the minimum number the minimum number of stars or pairs that you can to get a valid string okay if you want further details you can have a look at the question description below uh, let's try to find a solution for this so there are two things over here the first one is that the number of a's that we have let's say is n Okay, and you can have a contiguous block of size x. So the number of blocks you'll have with a's in them is at least ceiling of n by x. Okay, the second thing is that the number of blocks you will have for b's, bananas, contiguous blocks, is at least ceiling of m, where m is the number of b's that you have in the string, by y. Okay, these two numbers are pretty important, so I'm just going to call them P and Q. The reason this is the case, I mean, uh, N by X, we are taking the ceiling is because, you know, there will be some remainder. If you divide the number N by X, you're going to get the floor division, if you're doing integer division. So, what we want is the ceiling. Uh, let's take an example. Uh, let's take N is 5, and let's take X as 3. Okay, so what then you have is... Uh, the first block is of size 3 and the second block after some gap over here of either b's or pairs is going to be is going to be smaller and it's going to be of size 2 now uh, if you see this there are two blocks here and that is 5 by 3 ceiling which is 2 okay another example you can take is x being 2 over here you'll have three blocks of size 2, 2, and 1. Again, if you take 5 by 2 and seal of that, it's going to give you the same answer. 3 blocks. Okay, so the minimum number of blocks that you need for a particular fruit is given by the number of times it occurs in the string divided by the maximum contiguous uh, amount of those fruits you can have. Okay, now these two numbers are important because they define what you are going to insert into the original string. So let us assume that P is greater than Q in our case. So the number of apples, uh, minimum number of apple blocks is greater than the minimum number of banana blocks you need. Uh, which means that you have P of these apple blocks that you need to create, right, initially. All of them have some apples. And over here you need to stuff in some bananas or pears. So we, we don't really know whether it's bananas or pears now. But we have made the apple blocks. Now, Q. Q is interesting because if Q is less than, or rather if Q is greater than P plus 2, then you would need to insert more Qs than, uh, more bananas than you uh, could afford. But that can never happen because P is greater than Q. Okay, so this condition never occurs. And therefore, we can ignore this condition. So, the only two conditions given to us then is that 
either Q completely satisfies this constraint or it doesn't. Or we have too few bananas basically. So if P minus 1 is greater than the number of bananas you have n, then you are short on bananas and you need to insert pairs. Okay, so P minus 1 meaning these gaps. There are P blocks you have, so P minus 1 will be the gaps you have between these blocks. And if that is greater than the number of bananas you have, then you need to start inserting pairs. So what you'll do is you'll insert a banana here, banana here, so on and so forth, till you run out of bananas and then you start inserting pairs. Okay, so that part is pretty clear. Uh, if this is not the case, then there's just one option remaining. This is impossible. So there's just one option remaining. It's that you need to insert the bananas in such a way that they create P minus one blocks. All right. And so we know that there are N bananas. You need to insert, you need to create P minus one blocks. So M by P minus one is the number of bananas you need to put into each block. Okay, except there is there is something interesting here. P minus one may not divide M completely. So taking an example, uh, let's put M equal to five and we have P already given as one, two, three, four. So P is four. And then what you can say is that M by P minus one comes out to be five by three, which is 1.67 approx. Okay, so uh, how do you insert 1.67 bananas? You can't. Uh, what you have to do then is just take the integer that you have, forget the decimals, uh, and insert those many bananas first. So this is going to have one banana, one banana, and one banana. Uh, and what you have remaining? Well, 5 by 3 gives you a remainder of 2. So the first two blocks need one banana each. So you can insert one here and insert one here. And you, you see here that there are five blocks in these or rather there are two bananas in these two, uh, in these three blocks. Okay, so two, two, one. So getting into the code, what we're going to try to do is create a string s, which is going to be our answer. Uh, and whenever we're inserting into the string s, we are updating the counter of that string. So what is the index of the element that we're inserting into? Okay, so counter is that index for s. That's initialized to zero. Uh, length is the length of the block of bananas that we're inserting. Okay, so that is m by p minus 1 as we explained. Uh, remaining is telling you that the number of blocks having one extra banana, like we had 2, 2, and 1. Okay, so that comes out to be m uh, remainder p minus 1. So that's, that's pretty simple. Fine. So uh, the outer loop is defining the number of blocks that we have, having both a's and b's. So instead of 0 to p, we are going from 0 to p minus 1. Okay, or rather 0 to less than p minus 1 because we need p minus 1 blocks of apples and bananas and the final block, which is not mentioned here, is going to be another for loop identical to this one. Okay, we are going to insert another block of apples. So that is just, I'm just going to take this over here uh, and write it after this. So let's call this part A. And that is over here. Okay, that's going to happen. Fine. So, p minus one blocks of apples and bananas. How do you do it? Simple, actually. Uh, from j zero to less than x. So that is x apples will be inserted into the string. After that, we'll have j from zero to less than length, which is length number of bananas will be inserted into the string. Then we see that if the remainder is greater than zero. We decrement remainder and we add another banana to the string. Okay, so what that does is it makes sure that uh, if there are any extra bananas, then you insert them into the blocks. And so this runs p minus one times. That gives you p minus one blocks of such cases. And finally, you have this final block of a's inserted over here. So running the code, it will be something like p minus one times. You have blocks of a and then b and then A, and then B, and once you have run out of P minus one, finally there's a block of A's which are inserted. All right, so this gives you a valid string. 
The final and the easier case is when you do not have enough bananas. When you do not have enough bananas to actually stuff into uh, these blocks. So then what's going to happen is you're going to have an A and a B and an A and a B up till you run out of bananas. So this block size is going to be 1 by the way. Uh, and so instead of P minus 1, you'll have I less than M in that case. So because P minus 1 is greater than M, you'll have this quantity becoming M. Once you have run out of bananas, then you start inserting apple blocks and then the star. Okay, that's the pair. And then again apple blocks and then the pair. Exactly similar to how we are doing it over here. Uh, and so that takes care of the other scenario also. Finally, you might end up with a scenario where you have more banana blocks than apple blocks. So the whole problem can be inverted then. Instead of hard coding this character, we can pass it into a function, the character B and the character A, just invert them. Uh, and also invert X and Y, X and length actually. So that takes care of the whole thing. And that's it. That's the solution to the problem. Uh, the order complexity of this is going to be initially deciding on which block to pick up is order 1 and then doing this is order n no it's order n okay uh, it's not order n square because this is going to be p minus 1 into order p minus 1 into x plus length All right and uh, p minus 1 into x is going to be n the number of apples you have P minus 1 uh, into length is going to be m, the number of bananas you have. And basically that is order m plus m. So that is order n. Because n and m are similar lengths. So that's it for this problem. If you have any doubts or suggestions, you can put them in the comments below. Uh, I have the code of my implementation and Drexel's implementation in the description below. Uh, Drexel's implementation actually uses this algorithm. I use a slightly more brute force algorithm. Um, the next problem which is coming up is chef and cycles, so see you then.